Hi, my name is Todd Lipp. I'm a Senior Solutions Advisor for Rocket Software. I'm going to do an overview of thresholds versus situations using the Megapon Monitor for ZOS. Let's talk about thresholds. As you can see on the screen, our performance index value over here has lit up red. It happens because this particular attribute has exceeded the value specified in the threshold defined for this value. So let's first, let's talk about the colors a little bit because the colors can be unique to you. The colors you see in the C3270 are, are tied to your profile um, if you choose to have some customization. So let's go and edit and then into preferences here and we'll see how you can tweak the colors a little bit if you want to. Now this is your, just your general color preferences, but we're gonna be talking about thresholds right now. So you go to the status colors and these are the, the color assignments for your your thresholds, and this again can be saved, customized for you. Um, green is good, red is bad, you know, and in between. You can select other colors here if you want to, and if you do change the colors, then you're going to hit here, and you're going to hit save, and it's going to save a copy of this to your profile. You can hit enter to confirm that, and you have saved the new colors. So now we're going to look at how we control some of those thresholds or how you would edit it. And this is not going to be an all-inclusive step-by-step guide to thresholds. It's just an overview of kind of how they work. Now, first of all, you're going to want to make note of this screen name here, particularly the, the first three characters, okay? And then we're going to go into View Thresholds, Thresholds option number two here. Now, your clue for what the threshold member name is going to be, and it's going to end generally in THRSH, is the first three characters of that screen name we just talked about. So we're going to go to... KM5, THRSH, and here's the threshold members. And you can see that the users exist in RS test omeg.rs01.arcanparu, and they're in the DD Arcanpar concatenation. Now we'll take a look at what's in that concatenation later, but the user library at the top half here uh, takes precedent. So if it exists in the user library, you're going to change it here. Now this is a browse, so you can't actually change the values here, but you can go in and select the member. And you can find that panel name in this member. And you can see this is where the KM5L PR03 has its definitions. And you would go through here and find the particular table entry you wanted to alter the threshold for. Now, again, to go ahead and make the actual change, you're going to need to go into edit on the actual data set and, and edit the data set. And to confirm that you're going to the right data set, you can go to tools. And you're going to do option 10 here for your runtime environment. And this is going to tell you where all your in, your DDs are coming from and what data sets are associated with them. So Arcan par, again, there's two data sets in this concatenation. The Arcan par U will take precedent. And that's where you're going to change this particular data set or this particular member because there is a user version of this data set. Otherwise, it'd be in the default, which is shipped in Arcan par. Now notice below on this particular panel, you can also see where your thresholds come from. And this is going to be the same panel we saw a minute ago. And you can see the different user profiles associated with the files. So this is your full runtime environment, including your user overrides. Okay, and there's just one more thing I want to cover here as part of the threshold overview. And that's when you've made the change, what do I need to do to, to pull it in? And where you want to go as an alternative to recycling any tasks or anything like that is to go into tools and you're going to do four threshold refresh. And this is going to issue the request for the refresh in the background and you'll confirm in your system data set log or your system log that you have um, refreshed your threshold member. So now let's talk about situations just a little bit. Uh, we're going to start this on the event tree. You can see that we have some, some color here on, this, on the screen. And this column here is telling me what the current status in terms of events and situations is. And you can see for ZOS, it's red. So we're going to go in here and we're going to start to navigate down the tree. All right, and so we've got a couple of situations that have fired, a warning situation and a critical situation, okay? You see that both are still open. I'm gonna keep drilling down a little bit further and we're gonna see if there's anything else here because we have a plus sign and we don't. So there's a couple of things that you can do from this screen that are interesting to give you some insight in the situation. Now by default, when I hit the enter on this cursor, I'm gonna go straight to the LPAR review and maybe you're gonna to wanna to go in here and dig into, into what the problem is. Another thing of interest to point out is that you can get some detail about the situation by going into the event details. And we're gonna go in and we're gonna go and we're gonna see what the initial situation was and what caused it to fire. And it's a batch job and there's the job name, right? And then this is the current situation values for that job. 
and this will refresh. As long as this stays open, we're going to track both the current values and the initial situation values. So let's talk a little bit about how you actually edit and create situations and how you how they're made. Now, with regards to editing, there's a couple ways to, to edit a situation. One way you can kind of shortcut here by just putting the, cur or the line on the cursor there, and you can go to edit the situation here. But what we're going to talk about is the way to edit situations and add situations in general. So we're going to go to edit at the top here, and we're going to go to situations. Now we're going to come down to MVS system because that's situation location for the ZOS monitor. We're going to hit the plus and, and open up the tree a little bit. And we're going to point out a couple of things here. If I do a slash here at the very first line on the, at the top of the, the MVS branch, by default, I'm going to create a new situation and that's all I'm going to see. If I come down one screen to one of these existing situations, then I get some different options. I can edit the situations, I can create new, I can copy this one, I can start or stop this situation. And you can see here, some of these situations have been started. Um, not too many of them have been started. So we're gonna go back to the top of the branch here and we're gonna walk through what you would do to create a situation. And this is really more of an in instructive on how thresholds and situations are different. We're not gonna go through um, step by step uh, with everything you need to do to create situations here. So we're gonna do a standard situation. We don't wanna get into correlated switch situations. So I'm gonna call it something test. So you can identify that it's, it's something you're created um, for test. You might wanna use a different name or you might wanna give it a production name, but this tells me that this is a test situation and it can be deleted if somebody needs to delete it. We hit enter and we're gonna select from the table that we wanna select from. And so we're just gonna do address space bottlenecks here. And we're gonna, we're gonna select that table and it's gonna tell us what the different column names, what the different values are that we can build a situation around, right? And let's do NQ wait. Now we're gonna accept that. And it's gonna take us to the next screen. Now it's, it's propagated this with some values, right? But address space bottlenecks NQ wait equals zero, right? We didn't specify what we wanted to do here. So we're gonna do, do a select because we wanna edit that. And you can see that I wanna select the value here. I'm gonna edit this cell and I can make this function the value, min, max, sum, et cetera. Um, we're gonna say three for greater than, and we're gonna say 100, which is seconds. And then we're gonna accept it again. And now you can see the, the condition of our situation has been set. Then you can see the other values here as well. Your interval, which is how often it's gonna check the description, the severity level, et cetera. A couple of things you need to pay attention to when you add a situation is you need to go to the distribution panel here. And you can see up here at the top, number one, this has not been assigned anywhere yet. I have the two LPARs in my Plex available to assign it to. And I have this generic system group that I can assign it to, which is any MVS system. Always use the highest managed system group that you can so that you get the situation active everywhere you want it. In this case, we're gonna make it active in the MVS systems. Situations advice. Here you can put any advice you want to provide to the operator or the other programmer or whoever might be troubleshooting this problem. And so you're going to put your advice here. And it can be any tip. Mark the job complete. Call so-and-so. Actions if you want to take actions. You're going to issue a command here. It can be any MVS system command. And we're going to just display time just to put something in here. And we're going to accept it. And until now this basically just says when the situation or the interval expires. I'm gonna leave 30 seconds in here because it, you know, at this point it doesn't really matter what number we picked. We're just kind of walking through how this works. Now to, to make all of this apply, you're gonna go back to the formula tab. You're gonna hit apply. And you're gonna go okay to exit. And we're gonna go in the MVS system tree. And we're gonna see that I have added a situation and it started and uh, it runs at startup and there is an action associated with it. And so I hope this gives you some insight into a little bit difference between what thresholds are, which are basically just colors that, that set off the screen that do serve some alerting function, but it's really just thresholds you set to tell you when you look at the screen that something's going on and situations which are actually monitoring the situation or the, the attributes in the background and creating alerts and can take an action if that's what you so desire. This concludes my overview of thresholds versus situations using Omega Mon Monitor for ZOS. Thank you for